kuja kwa farasi wa kijivujivu umenenwa vizuri kabisa katika huduma hii especially after the lord spoke with me that he was coming in a vision na hasa sana wakati bwana alininenea ya kwamba anarudi katika maono and in that tremendous vision na katika hayo maono makuu of july 29 ya julai tarehe 29 the year 2009 mwaka wa 2009 and the lord has taken me since then na bwana amenipeleka kuanzia wakati huo across the different nations of the earth kote kote katika mataifa mbalimbali ya dunia speaking about he that was coming nikinena juu ya yeye aliyekuwa anakuja the rider of the pale horse mpanda farasi wa farasi wa kijivujivu and we see that when that prophecy was finally fulfilled na tunaona ya kwamba wakati hatimaye unabii huo ulitimizwa in february february 2011 february mwaka wa 2011 You can refer to the website where every detail is. Waweza kurejelea kwenye mtandao ambapo kila kipenge kimewekwa pale. Where every prophecy has been uh, published. Ambapo kila unabii umechapishwa. But anyhow, lakini hata hivyo, ever since the release of the rider of the pale horse, he has taken his rounds across the earth ameweza kufanya safari zake za hapa na pale kote kote duniani and you see in that literature i describe his facial appearance na waona ya kwamba katika maandishi yalo katika maandishi hayo ninaelezea sura yake ya uso and i talk about his deathly appearance na ninanena juu ya sura yake yenye mauti and then i also speak about the horse that he rides na pia ninanena juu ya farasi anayemwendesha but precious people lakini watu wa dhamani among the achievements that the rider of the pale horse has scored miongoni mwa mafanikio ambayo mpanda farasi wa farasi wa kijivujivu ameyapata i want to do a rundown ninataka nikapate kuchunguza and then establish myself in discussing the case for Syria. Alafu sasa nikajidhibiti pale katika kushughulikia kesi ya Syria. We see very clearly. Tuona kwa wazi kabisa that upon his release in Egypt. Ya kwamba wakati wa kuachiliwa kwake kule Misri. This angel of death. Huyu malaika wa mauti. Bro has brought tremendous death. Ameleta vifo vikali zaidi. And 
There is one thing that has become common. Na kuna kitu kimoja ambacho kimefanyika jambo la kawaida. In every land that he has run through. Katika kila inchi ambamo amepita. The carrying of a dead body. Kubeba kwa mwili wa mufu. The carrying of dead bodies. Kubeba kwa miili ya wafu. In coffins. Katika masanduku. And ever since the release of this most dreadful horseman it has become obvious imefanyika jambo la kawaida that death has befallen the face of the earth ya kwamba mauti imeushukia uso wa dunia in one such case katika kesi moja ya namna hiyo we see the killings that took place in egypt tunaona yale mauaji yaliyotendeka kule misri that culminated with his release ambayo yaliambatana na kuachiliwa kwake and in another case na pia katika kesi nyingine we see the massive bloodshed that rocked yemen tunaona umwagaji wa damu mzito kabisa ambao ulishukia yemen and bahrain na bahrain libya libya and then finally we also see the case for syria Alafu hatimaye pia tunaona ile kesi ya Syria. I would like us to listen to some news clips. Ningependa tukapate kusikia awamu fupi za habari on what is currently being reported on Syria. Juu ya kile ambacho hivi sasa kinaripotiwa juu ya Syria. Regarding the repercussions of the release of the pearl horse kuhusiana na yale anayotenda mpanda farasi wa farasi wa kijivujivu walipowachiliwa and then after that i will summarize for you his achievements na kisha baada ya hapo nitawaekeni katika mhutasari aliyofanikiwa nayo as we begin to get our bearing towards the most important message on israel today <laughs> Homs is Syria's third largest city. It's been the primary focus of attacks by the government and what we're showing you right now are some of the neighbors specifically targeted by government tanks, rocket attacks, snipers in some cases. What was remarkable also uh, today was that the violence moved from opposition stronghold cities like Homs, like Zabadani, which had faced the wrath of the Syrian army to the second city of Syria, Aleppo. There these twin uh, Uh, devastating bomb attacks that the Syrian government claims killed at least 27 people and more than uh, 200 people actually wounded they're accusing armed terrorists of carrying out this attack it's a menacing sight that many fear will bring death from the air this video shows helicopters flying to Jisr Ashraur a town that's now controlled by Syrian army troops they're still involved with fierce clashes with what they're calling armed groups and this elderly man has been shot but as the cries of my god go up he dies another victim funerals are now an almost daily occurrence across the country and yet more will be seen as the crackdown on anti-government protesters continues uh ruler we've been saying all along that the violence is continuing in syria and the latest reports we're getting is that uh, there's more fighting happening on the outskirts of damascus just bring us up to date with the fighting inside syria Yes the situation on the ground in Syria is deteriorating very very quickly not only in terms of the government measures against the protesters and the casualty numbers rising by the hour but also in terms of how the uh, the conflict is turning into an armed conflict sometimes between the army and defectors sometimes between the army and some armed groups who feel that it's time to carry arms against this government and that's the only way to go and so on the ground you see more and more people carrying guns more blood on the streets and more casualty even among the security forces and that's why on one hand some people on the street feel very desperate and now they are calling for international intervention they want the arab league to take more severe measures against the government they want the arab league to suspend serious membership in the arab league in order to put more pressure on the regime and they feel this is the only way out on the other hand the armed 
the escalating uh, situation is making more uh, some opposition more careful. They say they want this Arab land to be saved. They don't want the Arab League to drop it because that's the only way out. They want a smooth transition, a peaceful transition, and they feel if it means that they have to talk to the regime, they'll talk to the regime. But they need a way out because they fear a civil war and a very long bloody conflict. Mm. And one other development, Ruler, uh, a, a Lebanese man has been killed by a landmine that's been planted uh, along the border. Now, these are landmines being planted by the Syrian military to, they say, stop the flow of arms uh, into Syria from Lebanon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we see from those news clips that the rider of the pearl horse has brought horrific death across the face of the earth and in considering the case in Syria Syria has now developed into a difficult case, a classic case of what the ride of the pale horse is capable of doing. Syria sasa imefanyika kesi ngumu kabisa na pia ni kesi mwafaka ya kukuonesha kile ambacho farasi mpana farasi wa farasi wa kijivujivu anafanya. And you see even as the reporter has put it. Na waona hata kama vile zile reporti zimesema that death is a daily occurrence now in the land of Syria. Ya kwamba mauti ni jambo la kila siku sasa katika nchi ya Syria. And yes indeed if one is privileged to watch news events. Na kweli kabisa ikiwa mtu atatunukiwa kutazama habari. Then it's very common to see burials dead bodies being carried on coffins on stretchers across streets across the streets of Syria basi ni kawaida kabisa kuona mili ya wafu naona masanduku majeneza ya waliokufa wengine wamebebwa kwenye machela kote kote katika miji ya Syria and in other words the lord is saying look na kwa maneno mengine bwana anasema kwamba tazama he has brought death 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 and death ameleta mauti 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 na mauti it's very stunning ni ya kushangaza sana that an army an entire army of a nation like syria ya kwamba jeshi zima la taifa kama syria can turn against civilians laweza kuwageukia raia and gun them down na kuwalipua including babies hata watoto wachanga the rider of the pale horse mpanda farasi wa farasi wa kijivujivu has also wreaked havoc pia amesababisha machafuko he has brought havoc into libya ameleta machafuko kule libya we are all familiar with the crushing how the libyans crushed each other with weapons until you know most recently sote tuwakumbuka vyema kabisa jinsi wa Libya waliumizana na silaha hadi hivi majuzi precious people watu wa dhamani we see very clearly that even the united nation is at a dilemma it's at a loss to come out with any resolution or any solution tuona ya kwamba hata umoja wa mataifa wameshindwa wamekwama hawawezi kujitokeza na suluhisho lolote and this speaks so bad about what is in the offing na hii inanena vibaya kabisa kuhusu kile ambacho karibu kitatendeka because the rider of this pale horse is called death manake mpanda farasi wa huyu farasi wa kijivujivu anaitwa mauti and if the death the horrific bloodshed he, he has brought across the arab world na ikiwa yale mauti makuu kabisa ambayo ameileta kote kote katika maeneo ya ulimwengu wa arabia is just the beginning of birth pains ndio mwanzo tu wa utungu then how much more death na basi ni mauti ama kifo kikuu zaidi kiasi gani is there going to be during the tribulation kitakachokuwepo katika wakati wa dhiki and so the rider of the pale horse has done big big damage on the earth na kwa hivyo mpanda farasi wa farasi wa kijivujivu amesababisha uharibifu mkubwa zaidi kwenye uso wa dunia 
And remember that the four horsemen work in concert. Na kumbuka kwamba hawa wapanda farasi wanne wanafanya kazi katika makubaliano. So their effects are actually more massive. Na kwa hivyo athari zao sasa ni nzito hata zaidi. But precious people I want to turn pages now. Lakini watu wa dhamani ninataka kubadilisha kichwa sasa. And I would like to talk about Na ningependa kunena kuhusu about this tremendous vision of April 2nd. Juu ya haya maono makuu kabisa ya Aprili tarehe 2. And I'll describe it in in a summary form. Na nitaelezea kidogo katika mhutasari. So we may be able to get our bearing into the war that's going to take place between Iran and Israel. Ili ya kwamba tukapate mwelekeo wetu kuhusu vita hivi ambavyo vinaenda kutendeka kati ya Iran na Israeli. In that April 2nd vision of the Lord. Katika haya maono ya Aprili tarehe 2 ya Bwana. The Lord lifted me up. Bwana aliniinua. And I found myself standing right before the throne of Jehovah in heaven. Na nikajipata nikiwa nimesimama mbele moja kwa moja ya kiti cha enzi cha Jehovah mbinguni. And as I was standing right before the throne of Jehovah in heaven. Na nilipokuwa nimesimama mbele ya kiti cha enzi cha Jehovah mbinguni. I saw the glory that covered the throne like a mountain. Niliona utukufu uliofunika hicho kiti cha enzi kama mlima. And then I saw the lamb of God that was slain for the sins of man. The other part of that conversation is when the Lord presented John the Baptist on my right hand side to speak with me. Wapendwa wasikilizaji ni wakati alipowasilisha Yohana mbatizaji upande wangu wa mkono wa kulia. And he began John the Baptist began speak, speaking with me began to speak with me about the coming of the Messiah. Na Yohana mbatizaji akaanza kunena pamoja nami juu ya kurudi kwake Masia. The lamb of God. Mwana kondoo wa Mungu that was slain for the sins of man. Aliyechinjwa kwa ajili ya dhambi za mwanadamu. And after that. Na baada ya hapo There was a small separation between where I was standing and the throne of God. Kulikuwepo na mgawanyiko kidogo katikati ya pale nilipokuwa nimesimama na kiti cha enzi cha Mungu. And the glory of the Lord came from the throne and covered and bridged up. All I remember so well. Kile ambacho nakumbuka vyema kabisa is that when John the Baptist was speaking with me in that conversation. Ni ya kwamba wakati Yohana mbatizaji alikuwa akinena pamoja nami katika mazungumzo hayo. His garment was totally glorified. Mavazi yake yalikuwa yametukuzwa kabisa kamili. And I remember that when I looked at my garment it had been transfigured too. Na ninakumbuka ya kwamba nilipotazama mavazi yangu pia nayo yalikuwa yamegeuzwa. And then at that time Na kisha wakati huo huo the spirit of the Lord lifted me up from there and took me to Israel. Roho wa Bwana akaninua toka pale na kunipeleka Israeli. And once in Israel Na nilipokuwa kule Israeli the Lord showed me that there was going to be two time a two time change of leadership in Israel. Bwana akanionyesha ya kwamba kwaenda kuwepo na mabadiliko mara mbili ya uongozi wa Israeli. And the second change when it takes place it would be a right hardline right wing hardline government. Na mabadiliko ya wi, na, ma, na mabadiliko ya pili yatakapotendeka itakuwa ni serikali ya bawa la kulia. And also na pia he showed me uh, that, that, that there would be that, that that change of government was going to be Benjamin Netanyahu akanionyesha ya kwamba hayo mabadiliko ya serikali yatakuwa Benjamin Netanyahu and so ever since then i went around and i've been prophesying that There is Benjamin Netanyahu 1 which had already taken place and there would be Benjamin Netanyahu 2 after the second change of leadership in Israel Baada ya mabadiliko ya pili ya uongozi Israeli Then the Lord lifted me up and I found myself standing right before the throne of God Almighty again Kisha Bwana akaninua na nikajipata mara tena nimesimama moja kwa moja mbele ya kiti cha enzi cha Bwana tena 
Then at that time the moon appeared right above the throne of God. Na kisha wakati huo mwezi ukatokea moja kwa moja pale kwenye kiti cha enzi cha Mungu juu. And when the moon appeared the moon became totally covered with blood. Na wakati ule mwezi ulitokezea ukawa umefunikwa kamili kamili na damu. And so the moon overcast its shadow on the earth and i saw that the whole earth was bloody in appearance na basi ule mwezi ukafunika dunia nzima na kivuli chake na nikaona kwamba dunia nzima ilibadilika ikawa na rangi ya uwekundu wekundu wa damu and then all of a sudden na kisha ghafla i saw the most powerful and most mighty glorious lamb of god coming from the throne from the glory of the throne and when the lamb of god was released to come from the throne of god na wakati mwanakondoo wa mungu aliachiliwa aje toka kwenye kiti cha enzi cha mungu he came all the way towards me akaja moja kwa moja mpaka mahali pale nilipokuwa and as he came everything in a big perimeter turned absolutely glorious na alipokuja kila kitu katika maeneo hayo mapana kikabadilika na kuwa cha utukufu kabisa kabisa and then immediately i woke up na kisha ghafla nikaamuka and at that time na wakati huo till now mpaka wa leo then i began prophesying the coming of the messiah basi nikaanza kutabiri kuja kwake masia and that there would be two, a two time change of leadership in Israel na ya kwamba kutakuwepo na mabadiliko mara mbili ya uongozi kule Israeli and then after the two time change of leadership in Israel na kisha baada ya mabadiliko mara mbili ya uongozi wa Israeli then the messiah would come for the church basi masihi sasa atalirudia kanisa and so It's amazing right now. Na kwa hiyo inashangaza sana hivi sasa. Because immediately I spoke that prophecy. Manake mara moja tu niliponena unabii huo. We now see very clearly. Sasa tunaona kwa wazi kabisa that Ariel Sharon who was at that time the prime minister. Ya kwamba Ariel Sharon ambaye wakati huo alikuwa waziri mkuu. He fell very sick and went into a coma akawa mgonjwa kabisa kabisa na akapata koma until this day mpaka siku ya leo and that then gave way to the first change of leadership and he was replaced by Ehud Olmet na nafasi yake ikachukuliwa na Ehud Olmet when Ehud Olmet came in wakati Ehud Olmet alichukua usukani within a short time he was pronounced not well not healthy katika kitambo kifupi katangazwa kwamba hana afya njema hayuko sawa and they mentioned prostate cancer na wakataja ya kwamba ni prostate ca- prostate cancer and so after that na basi baada ya hapo we also saw the different scandals that followed like corruption scandals tuliona zile kesi zilizofuatia kama kesi za ufisadi and the court sessions na pia zile awamu za kotini and then after that there was the second there was a second change of leadership in israel na kisha baada ya hapo paka kuwepo na mabadiliko ya pili ya uongozi israeli and when the second change took place na wakati badiliko la pili lilitendeka indeed benjamin netanyahu won the elections kweli kabisa benjamin netanyahu akashinda huo uchaguzi and he became the prime minister of israel na akafanyika waziri mkuu wa israeli benjamin netanyahu benjamin netanyahu and his foreign minister of foreign affairs na waziri wake wa mambo ya kigeni became a victor liberman akafanyika a victor liberman who is considered actually to come from an extremely right wing political Uh, affiliation ambaye anatoka katika bawa la kulia ambalo ni kali kabisa katika mambo ya kisiasa 
And it's so it's incredible that the same shock that I saw in that vision. Na basi ya shangaza ya kwamba mshtuko ule ule ambao niliona kwenye maono hayo when the nations of the earth were very surprised as to how they would engage the Israeli leadership uh, for the peace talks Waka. when the leadership is very very conservative but what is most stunning lakini kile cha kushangaza hata zaidi is that after the second change of leadership in Israel ni ya kwamba baada ya badiliko la pili la uongozi kule Israeli then the lamb of god comes for the church basi mwana kondoo wa mungu analijia kanisa that second change has taken place hilo badiliko la pili limetendeka even right now as we speak it has taken place hata hivi sasa tunaponena limetendeka so precious people na kwa hivyo watu wa dhamani I want now to tie this. Ninataka sasa kuambatanisha hii to this tremendous war that is coming to Iran. Kwa hivi vita vikuu kabisa vijavyo Iran. That you may know. Ili kwamba ukapate kujua that in this time in this time is over. Ya kwamba ama kweli wakati umekwisha. Precious people. Watu wa dhamani. In 2005. Katika mwaka wa 2005 on the 27th of september katika tarehe ya 27 ya mwezi wa september while at mbea in tanzania nikiwa kule mbea tanzania the lord showed me the tremendous dream of what was coming to befall the earth bwana alinionyesha ndoto kuu kabisa ya kile ambacho kilikuwa kinaijia dunia and in that conversation na katika mazungumzo hayo the lord showed me a nuclear facility which is by the foot of a mountain Bwana alinionyesha kituo cha nuclear ambacho kiko chini ya mlima And at that foot of the mountain Na mahali pale chini ya mlima Then I saw two missiles fired Basi nikaona makombora mawili yamelipuliwa Again two missiles were fired towards the nuclear facility. Na mara tena makombora mawili yalilipuliwa kulenga hicho kituo cha nuclear. And I see the 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 the, the, the behind part of the 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 missile is kind of like copper is copper color. Na ninaona ya kwamba sehemu ya nyuma kama mkia wa hayo makombora ina rangi ya copper. And as the the, the as the missiles go they pro pel slowly like this Na wakati yale makombora yanasonga yakienda kuna vile yanajiendesha polepole kwa namna hiyo So there is a propelling and a spinning of its tail Na kwa hivyo kuna kusukumika fulani na pia kuzunguka kiasi kwa mkia wake The tail that is copper like Mkia ambao ni kama copper But what astonished me most Lakini kilichonishangaza zaidi is when the missiles struck the nuclear facility of Iran ni wakati yale makombora yaligonga kile kituo cha nuclear cha Iran at the foot of a mountain chini ya mlima and so i saw a huge historic flame na kwa hivyo nikaona moto mkubwa wa kihistoria that the earth has never seen before ambao dunia haijawahi kuona tangu mwanzo and the flame is as, as though it begins from the east and goes all the way through to the west and that fire na huo moto has small fires inside inside small fires that are kali like small short fires that are kali like that go all the way almost into the heaven una miali midogo midogo ama mioto midogo midogo ndani yake kana kwamba inakunjana kiasi hivi na inaenda juu mpaka kule mbinguni and immediately after that na kisha mara moja tu baada ya hiyo after seeing the tremendous explosion baada ya kuona ule mlipuko mkubwa ajabu that can only come from a nuclear explosion ambao waweza kutokana tu na mlipuko wa kinyuklia the biggest explosion the biggest flame that the earth has lived to see mlipuko mkubwa zaidi moto mkubwa zaidi ambao dunia imeishi kuona after that vision baada ya maono hayo then 
I immediately began to go across the world. Basi mara moja nikaanza kwenda kote kote duniani. Announcing that a historic war was coming to the earth. Nikitangaza kwamba vita vya kihistoria viaje duniani. Let us hear how the Lord announced across very many nations. There is a very serious war coming to happen on planet earth. Na kuna vita ambavyo ndio vya hatari sana vya kuja kutendeka katika dunia. The type of war the earth has not seen before. Aina ya vita I have seen it happening already. It is going to happen somewhere between Europe and Africa. So time has passed. I want you to know that in 1948 end time began. Nataka niweleze kwamba mwaka 1948 nyakati za mwisho zilianza. That is when the nation of Israel was reformed. Hapo ndipo taifa la Israel liliumbika upya. And that's why the Lord is showing me these things. Na ndio sababu Bwana ananionyesha mambo haya. I have also seen a nuclear war coming to the earth. Pia nimeona vita vya kinyuklia vikikuja kwa ardhi. The servants of the Lord know what that means. Watumishi wa Mungu wanajua hiyo inamaanisha nini. And those of you that have listened some of the sermons. Na wale ambao wamesikiza baadhi ya zile jumbe. We have entered end time. Tumeingia nyakati za mwisho. I have seen the war coming to Iran also. And I see two missiles, they are fired by Israel and they strike the nuclear facility in, in Iran. A war coming to Iran. I have seen, remember the prophecy of September 2005? I have seen two, there are two missiles. In fact, I see the, 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 the end of the missile is like copper copper color the color is golden copper copper i think it's copper and they spin like this as they have been fired and they strike the nuclear facility that is next to the mountain in iran i don't know whether they are nuclear missiles or what they are but the only thing i know is that the fire that comes from that explosion it begins from the earth and almost reaches heaven and the fire that comes from that explosion in that vision I saw it went as far as east is as far as west is it will be also most historic hallelujah Hallelujah. So we see very very clearly. Kwa hivyo tunaona kwa wazi kabisa kabisa. Even me I'm very stunned. Hata nami nimeshangazwa sana. That this is one prophecy. Ya kwamba huu ni unabii mmoja. That the Holy Spirit has pronounced extensively across the entire earth. Ya kwamba huu ni unabii mmoja ambao Roho Mtakatifu ameutangaza kwa upana kote kote duniani. It, I'm very amazed by the collection of all these prophecies that the Lord sent me to give across the entire earth. Nimeshangazwa kabisa na kusanyiko la huu unabii wote ambao Bwana alinituma nikatabiri kote kote duniani. That speaks very clearly about the centrality of Israel in this moment in this end time hiyo inanena vikuu zaidi juu ya ukatikati wa Israeli katika majira haya because i'm indeed very astonished manake bila shaka nimeshangazwa sana when i finally put together all these clips of the of the same prophecy wakati hatimaye ninaweka pamoja awamu hizi za unabii huo mmoja then i've realized that this is one particular prophecy that i've given extensively na basi nimetambua ya kwamba huu ni unabii mmoja ambao nimeutoa kwa upana that means it can only be second 
to the prophecy on the coming of the Messiah himself. Na basi hiyo inamaanisha kwamba waweza tu kuwa wa pili baada ya unabii wa kuja kwake masihi mwenyewe. But I want to share something now. Lakini sasa nataka kushiriki jambo. That is very very critical. Lililo nyeti sana sana. Towards the coming of the Messiah. Kuelekea kuja kwake Masia in relation to this war katika kuambatana na vita hivi you can see that as i began going around all over the globe waweza kuona ya kwamba nilipoanza kwenda kote kote katika dunia nzima pronouncing this coming of the horrific war nikitabiri huku kuja kwa hivi vita vikali And you see in the nature of the description of the flames as i said na unaona katika asili ya ule moto nilivyoelezea the description of the explosion that takes place in that war maelezo ya mlipuko unaolipuka katika vita hivyo something tells me kuna kitu kinachoniambia that these two missiles that the lord showed me in that tremendous vision ya kwamba haya makombora mawili ambayo bwana alinyonyesha katika hayo maono makuu that they are actually nuclear missiles ya kwamba kwa kweli ni makombora ya kinyuklia and so I think because Israel cannot take chance with Iran. Na basi ninadhania ni ya kwamba kwa sababu Israeli haiwezi kufanya mzaha na Iran. Israel actually fires two mu- nuclear missiles that totally devastate the Iranian nuclear program. Extensive damage. Sasa Israeli wanalipua makombora mawili ya kinyuklia ambayo kabisa kabisa inaharibu haribu kile kituo cha nyuklia cha Iran. And today I am going to discuss with you some two very very important wars that are very critical for this end time. Na siku ya leo naenda kujadili pamoja nanyi vita viwili ambavyo ni nyeti sana sana katika haya majira ya nyakati za mwisho. I am going to discuss with you the Israel Iran war that I am prophesying now. Naenda kujadili pamoja nanyi vita vya Israeli Iran ambavyo ninavitabiri hivi sasa. And I'm going to place it for you to, to, to position that war for you to try to position it for you that you may understand just how close we are to the coming of the Messiah. Na ninaenda kuwawekeni hivi vita katika nafasi yake ili kujaribu kukusaidia ujue ni katika ukaribu gani tumekaribia kurudi kwake Masia. And then I am also going to discuss the war of Armageddon. Alafu pia naenda kujadili vita vya Armageddon. In Hebrew they say har Megiddo har Megiddo har Megiddo the Megiddo hills there is a valley and a hill Na katika Kiebrania wanasema har Megiddo So these two was a very very central in biblical prophecy and today the Lord has allowed me to open them up because I'm involved in prophesying this first one the Israel Iran war basi hivi vita ni vya kati tena vya shina zaidi katika unabii wa Biblia maana ninahusika moja kwa moja katika kutabiri vita vya kwanza ambavyo ni baina ya Israeli na Iran I have seen people quoting me all across the web and different media saying that The man of God has said that the Israel Iran war is post rapture. Nimeona watu wakininuku wakini kote kote kwenye mtandao na katika habari mbalimbali mbali, wakisema kwamba nabii wa Mungu amesema vita vya Israeli Iran ni vya baada ya unyakuzi. I am going to resolve that today tonight here. Naenda kutatua hiyo leo hii hapa usiku huu. But first of all before I open up this and go into scripture. Lakini mwanzo kabisa kabla ni fungue hii na kuingia katika maandiko to tell you to, to tell you what does scripture what scripture says about this Israel Iran war ili niwaambieni ni maandiko yepi yananena juu ya vita hivi vya Israeli na Irani ever since i began going all over the globe giving this prophecy of the coming of this horrific war Tangia nilipoanza kwenda kote kote ulimwenguni na kutabiri kuja kwa hivi vita vikali sana even before it appeared in the radar of the news networks hata kabla tu kuanza kuonekana katika habari za mitandao za habari then all of a sudden this began 
flashing in the news. Basi ghafla hii ikaanza kupita pita kwenye habari. And there are several news reportages that began to come out. Na kuna ripoti mbalimbali za habari ambazo zilianza kujitokeza. And what makes this kesha particularly most sensitive? Na kile kinachofanya hii kesha kuwa makinifu hata zaidi is because right now when one watches their news all over the globe ni kwa sababu hivi sasa kote kote duniani ikiwa yeyote yule anaweza kutazama habari zake one finds that this war actually is about happen finally is becoming a reality mtu anatambua any moment now Mtu anatambua ya kwamba hivi vita kwa kweli karibu vitendeke. Sasa limefanyika jambo halisia na kwa hivyo wakati wowote kuanzia sasa any moment now that war will take place. Wakati wowote sasa vita hivyo vitatendeka. And in fact it's being described as one month from now two months it's, it's incredible to see the manifestation the realization and the fulfillment of the words of my tongue in the global media na unasikia wanaelezea wanasema mwezi moja kuanzia sasa miezi miwili kuanzia sasa na makweli limefanyika kuwa jambo halisia kudhibitishwa na kutimia kwa unabi huo but what is the significance of this war to the church to you the listeners lakini je umuhimu wa vita hivi ni upi kwako wewe msikilizaji but first of all before i go into that final most important phase lakini kwanza kab, kabisa kabla niende katika hiyo awamu ya mwisho kabisa in defining to you biblically based on bible scripture katika kuwaelezeni kibiblia kulingana na maandiko ya biblia where exactly that war is ni wapi hasa vita hivyo vinapatikana na hivyo vita ni vya muhimu kiasi kipi to the church kwa kanisa and how telling it is na vile ambavyo vina ujumbe to you the christians now kwa kwa wewe kama mkristo hivi sasa about how the proximity of the lord's coming how close juu ya ukaribu wa kuja kwake masia let us first go to all the global media wacha kwanza kabisa twende katika vyombo vyote vya habari vya kote duniani we have only have only taken a few of them nimechagua chache tu miongoni mwa nyingi and find out how they are now reporting on this war and that is about to happen na tusikie vile wana ripoti juu ya vita hivi na kwamba vi karibu kutendeka and remember na kumbukeni that the flames go as far as east is almost coming to as far as west is ya kwamba ule moto unawaka kama vile umbali wa magharibi ulivyo na mashariki and as far as the earth is towards as far as heaven is na sawa na umbali katikati ya dunia na mbinguni that tells me that that is a nuclear war na basi hiyo yanieleza kwamba hivyo ni vita vya kinyuklia and that also tells me that this war might engulf the entire middle east na hiyo yaniambia pia ya kwamba hivi vita vyaweza kuwezesha vyaweza kuhusisha uh, mashariki ya kati yote let us first get the reportage from the television stations then i'll read a few newspaper reportages from israel and beyond and then now i'll narrow with you down on the biblical principles biblical significance of this war wacha kwanza tusikie ripoti za televisheni mbalimbali juu ya vita hivyo kisha nitawasomeni pia kutoka kwa magazeti mbalimbali ya Israeli alafu hatimaye nitalenga hasa maana ya kibiblia inayohusiana na hivyo vita and when i will be able to do that na nitakapowezeshwa kufanya hivyo then i will essentially have accomplished the work for which the lord sent me here tonight basi kimsingi nitakuwa nimetamatisha kazi ambayo kwayo bwana alinituma hapa usiku wa leo and blessed are you that have not slept this is cnn breaking news all right there's breaking news coming out of the pentagon about the possibility of an israeli attack on iran let's go right to our pentagon correspondent barbara star barbara what's going on well, Wolf, we have now confirmed from a senior administration official, Defense Secretary Leon Panetta believes there is a strong likelihood that Israel, Israel may strike Iran's nuclear program sometime this spring. Why does the Defense Secretary believe this? The Israelis have been talking about a so-called zone of immunity. What the Israelis believe is that by th this spring, that is their best chance to strike Iran's program with their weapons. I want to get to another Fox News alert now, a new report raising the possibility that Israel is preparing to attack Iran and to carry out that attack within months. 
This now from the Washington Post, quoting Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta, who believes there's a strong likelihood, it writes, that Israel will strike Iran in April, May, or June before Iran enters what Israelis described as a zone of immunity to commence building a nuclear bomb, end quote. A group of former CIA and military officials have written to President Obama to say they believe Israel is preparing to attack Iran this month. The experts explain Israel wants to launch a war suddenly and make it politically untenable for Obama to do anything other than further support uh, to offer full U.S. military support. The U.S. is moving thousands of its troops to Israel for a planned joint exercise. It comes against the backdrop of increasing tensions in the Persian Gulf over Iran's threat to block the crucial Hormuz Strait. Some analysts have voiced fears it could be part of a build-up to a military strike on Iran. Well, for further details, let's join our correspondent Paula Slear. She is in Jerusalem. So these latest movements, should they be cause for concern? Well, certainly people here are concerned by the latest developments. They come at a particularly sensitive time in the region as the American President Barack Obama has signed into law sanctions that will make it very difficult for countries to buy oil from Iran. Now, what we're hearing from the Israeli military is that it will reportedly be holding its biggest military drill ever with the United States. And what's important to note is that we're not talking here of only a military exercise. We're talking about the deployment of thousands of American troops in to Israel. What we're hearing from both sides is that they will be testing various missile systems against rockets and against missiles. What we're hearing though from the Iranian officials is that they believe that this is the latest and most blatant sign that Israel is planning to attack Iran and attack it sometime soon. Now you can see very clearly the words of this prophecy beginning to take shape in a most serious form that the nations of the earth have never ever seen. You've heard how there is panic in the reportage from the major news networks on the fact that now there is intelligence information that Israel might strike Iran either in this coming month, April or May or June. That is just how soon everything is happening now. Ya kwamba kuna habari za ndani kabisa ambazo zinakuja ya kwamba Israeli wanaweza kugonga Iran mwezi ujao wa Aprili ama mwezi wa tano wa Mei ama mwezi wa sita wa Julai wa Juni. And, and that's why I want to look at this very significant war. Na ndio maana nataka kuangazia hivi vita vilivyo vya muhimu sana. In the Bible. Katika Biblia. And then I will also cover a very sensitive place. Na pia nitashughulikia mahali pengine palipo nyeti sana. Not only covering the two wars and how they relate to the coming of Christ. Na sio kuhusiana tu na hivi vita viwili na vile ambavyo vinaambatana na kurudi kwake Masia. But I will also I would also like to cover for you the role of Iran in biblical prophecy. Lakini pia ningependa kushughulika kushughulikia pamoja nawe jukumu la Iran katika unabii wa nyakati za mwisho. First of all, I would just like to read Kwanza, the book of Revelation chapter 19 then I'll pull for you some very key features that relates to this kind of war. Kwanza kabisa this ning- particular war. Kwanza kabisa ningependa kusoma nanyi katika kitabu cha ufunuo wa Yohana mlango wa 19 na kisha nitawaleteni vipengele vya muhimu zaidi vinavyoambatana na vita hivi. From verse 6 Revelation 19 from verse 6 to verse 9 Ni ufunuo wa Yohana 19 kuanzia mstari wa 6 mpaka wa 9 As we have routinely read regarding the wedding of the lamb of god Kama vile mara kwa mara tumesoma kuhusiana na harusi ya mwanakondoo wa Mungu And I'm going to link this up for you with this, the war that Ezekiel the prophet saw in Ezekiel chapters 38 and 39 Na nitaweza kuambatanishia hii na vita vile ambavyo nabii Ezekiel aliona katika Ezekiel 38 na Ezekiel 39 
From verse 6 he says Revelation chapter 19 verse 6. Ufunuo wa Yohana mlango wa 19 kuanzia mstari wa 6 anasema hivi. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude like the roar of rushing waters. Kisha nikasikia sauti kama sauti ya umati mkubwa wa watu kama sauti ya maji mengi yaendayo kasi. And like loud peals of thunder shouting. Na kama ngurumo kubwa ya radi ikisema. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For our Lord God Almighty reigns. Kwa maana bwana mungu wetu mwenyezi anamiliki. Let us rejoice. Na tukafurahi. And be glad. Tukashangilie. And give him glory. Na kumpa utukufu. For the wedding of the lamb has come. Kwa maana arusi ya mwanakondo imewadia. And his bride has made herself ready. Na bibi arusi wake amejiweka tayari. Fine linen. Kitani nzuri. Bright and clean. Safi ingarayo. Was given her to wear. Amepewa kuvalia. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of the saints. Hiyo kitani safi inawakilisha matendo ya haki ya watakatifu. Then the angels say to me. Ndipo yule malaika akaniambia. Right. Andika haya. Blessed are those who are invited. Wamebarikiwa wale walioalikwa to the wedding supper of the lamb. Kwenye karamu ya arusi ya mwana kondo. And he added, Nae akaongezea, These are the true words of God. Hayandiyo maneno ya kweli ya mungu. At this, Kwa haya, I fell at his feet, Ndipo nikaanguka kifudifudi miguuni pake, To worship him, Ili kumwabudu, But he said to me, Lakini yeya kaniambia, Do not, do it. Usifanye hivyo. I am a fellow servant with you. Mimi pia ni mtumishi mwenzako pamoja na ndugu zako. And with your brothers. Na ndugu zako. Who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Walio na ushuhuda wa Yesu. Worship God. Mwabudu Mungu. For the testimony of Jesus. Maana ushuhuda wa Yesu. Is the spirit of prophecy. Ndiyo roho ya unabii. Verse 11. Mstari wa 11. I saw first of all before I go to verse 11. Kwanza kabisa kabla niende katika mstari wa 11. You see that verses 6 to verse 10. Waona ya kwamba mstari wa 6 mpaka wa 10 essentially celebrate the wedding of the lamb of God. Kimsingi anasherekea arusi ya mwanakondo wa Mungu. The rap of the church. Unyakuzi wa kanisa. The gathering of the saints in the glory of the Lord. Kuwakusanya watakatifu katika utukufu wa Mungu. The entry of the elect of God in the church into the kingdom of God. Kuingia kwa wateule wa Mungu kanisani katika ufalme wa Mungu. The deliverance of the righteous church. Ukombozi wa kanisa la uhaki. Into the kingdom of God. Katika ufalme wa Mungu. Verses 6 to verse 10. Mstari wa sita hadi wa kumi. It is well celebrated. Imesherekewa wa viema kabisa. Well highlighted. Na kusisitizo wa viema kabisa. And well established in the word. Na kuimarishu wa viema katika neno. It is established in heaven. Imeimarishu wa mbinguni. And established on the earth. Na imeimarishu hapa chini duniani. But I want to move on to Revelation chapter 19 from verse 11 onwards. Lakini nataka nisonge katika ufunua mlango wa kumi na tisa kuanzia mstari wa kumi na moja kuendelea. So that I may illustrate to you ya kwamba nikapate kuwaonesheni the sensitivity ule umakinifu of this Iran Israel Iran war that I have been prophesying across the entire globe wa hivi vita vya Israeli na Irani ambavyo nimekuwa nikivitabiri kote kote duniani and extensively tena kwa urefu na upana so let us walk from verse 11 of Revelation 19 onwards. Kwa hivyo tuanze safari ya kuanza katika ufunuo 19 mstari wa 11 kuendelea. He says, Asema, I saw heaven standing open. Kisha nikaona mbingu imefunguka. And there before me was a white horse. Na hapo mbele yangu akiwepo farasi mweupe. Whose rider is called Faith 
full and true ambaye yeye aliyempanda huyo farasi anaitwa mwaminifu na wakweli with justice he judges and makes war yeye huhukumu kwa haki na kupigana vita his eyes are like blazing fire macho yake ni kama miali ya moto and on his head are many crowns na juu ya kichwa chake kuna taji nyingi he has a name written on him alikuwa na jina liloandikwa juu yake that no one knows ambaye hakuna mtu anayelijua but he himself isipokuwa yeye mwenyewe he is dressed in a robe alikuwa amevaa vazi dipped in blood lilochovwa kwenye damu and his name is the word of god na jina lake ni neno la mungu the armies of heaven majeshi ya mbinguni were following him walikuwa wakimfuata riding on white horses wakiwa wamepanda farasi weupe and dressed in fine linen hali wamevaa mavazi ya kitani nzuri white and clean nyeupe na safi out of his mouth toka kinywani mwake comes a sharp sword mulitoka upanga mkali which, with which he strikes down the nations ambao kwa huo atayaangusha mataifa you, you see there is one war already being mentioned here waona tayari kuna vita moja vinatajwa hapa but please bear with me lakini tafadhali nivumilie i like the fact napenda swala kwamba that in this kesha ya kwamba katika kesha hii the lord kept the best wine bwana aliweka divai nzuri zaidi up to now mpaka wa sasa he kept the best wine aliweka divai nzuri and now he's giving it last na sasa anaipeana ya mwisho and people are asking na watu wanauliza you mean you kept all the best wine yani unamaanisha uliweka divai yote nzuri the choicest of wine ile divai bora zaidi up to this late hadi wakati huu wa kuchelewa hour, mpaka saa hii because people always manake watu kwa kawaida present the best wine first huwasilisha divai nzuri kwanza and when people have drunk enough of the best wine na wakati watu wamekunywa vya kutosha divai nzuri and is exhausted na imekwisha then the poorer wine basi ile divai ambayo ni ovyo kiasi is presented to them inawasilishwa kwao and in this case today na kati kesha hii usiku leo waweza kuona ya kwamba divai nzuri sana bwana aliiweka mpaka wa sasa saying, na anasema kwamba kuna vita hapa tena nitaelezea nivumilie says, anasema the armies of heaven were following him na majeshi ya mbinguni walikuwa wakimfuata riding on white horses wakiwa wamepanda farasi weupe in fine linen hali wamevaa mavazi ya kitani nzuri white and clean nyeupe safi out of his mouth toka kinywani mwake comes a sharp sword mulitoka upanga mkali with which he strikes down the nations ambao kwa huo atayaangusha mataifa he will rule them with an iron scepter atayatawala kwa fimbo yake ya utawala ya chuma he treats the wine press atalikanyaga shinikizo la mvinyo of the fury of the wrath wa ghadhabu ya hasira of god ya mungu one or he says on his robe na anasema kwenye vazi lake and on his thigh na kwenye paja lake he has a name written liliandikwa jina hili king of kings mfalme wa wafalme and lord of lords na bwana wa mabwana and i saw an angel nami nikamuona malaika standing in the sun amesimama ndani ya jua who cried in a loud voice sorry akaita kwa sauti kuu to all the birds ndege wote flying mid air warukao angani come Joni gather together kusanyikeni pamoja for the great supper kwa ajili ya karamu kubwa of god ya mungu so that you may eat ili mpate kula the flesh of kings nyama ya wafalme generals na ya wamajemedari mighty men na ya mashujaa 
Oh, hallelujah. Uh, and then he says, of horses. Na anasema na ya farasi. And their riders. Na ya wapanda farasi. And the flesh of all people. Na nyama ya wanadamu wote. Free and slaves. Waliohuru na watumwa. Small and great. Wadogo na wakubwa. Verse 19 is very critical. Mstari wa 19 ni nyeti sana. Then I saw the beast. Kisha nikamuona yule mnyama. And the kings of the earth. Na wafalme wa dunia. And their armies gathered. Pamoja na majeshi yao wakiwa wamekusanyika. Together. Pamoja. To make war ili kupigana vita against the rider of the white horse dhidi ya yule aliyempanda huyo farasi mweupe and his army pamoja na jeshi lake verse 20 is critical mstari wa 20 ni nyeti but the beast lakini yule mnyama was captured akakamatwa and with him the pa- false prophet pamoja na huyo nabii wa uongo let me repeat that wacha nirudie hiyo but the beast lakini yule mnyama was captured akakamatwa and with him pamoja nae the false prophet na huyo nabii wa uongo who performed ambaye alikuwa amefanya the miraculous signs ishara on his behalf kwa niaba ya huyo mnyama with these signs ambaye kwa ishara hizi he had deluded aliwadanganya those who had received the mark wale waliopokea chapa of the beast ya huyo mnyama and worshiped his image na kuiabudu sanamu yake the two of them hawa wawili and i mean here he's talking about the beast and the false prophet nami na maanisha hapa kwamba ananena juu ya huyu mnyama na nabii wa uongo the two of them hawa wawili were thrown alive wakatupwa wakiwa hai into the fiery lake katika ziwa la moto of burning sulfur liwakalo kwa kiberiti the rest of them wale waliosaliwa were killed with the sword waliuawa kwa upanga that came out of the mouth uliotoka kinywani of the rider on the horse mwa yule aliyekuwa amempanda huyo farasi mweupe and all the birds now ndege wote gorged themselves wakajishibisha on their flesh kwa nyama yao in other words kwa maneno mengine the birds became engorged ya kwamba wale ndege wakashibishwa listen precious people nisikize watu wa dhamani i want to explain to you very very carefully nataka kuwaelezeni kwa makini sana sana so you may understand this very sensitive information ili ya kwamba mkaelewa huu ujumbe ulio nyeti sana absolutely critical nyeti sana sana this is a secret of god hii ni siri ya mungu these are the secrets of heaven hizi ni siri za mbinguni that the lord is releasing in these last days ambazo mwana anaachilia katika hizi siku za mwisho i want to explain to you nataka niwaelezeni what he is talking about in revelation 19 here kile ambacho ananena juu yake hapa katika ufunuo 19 anasema from verse 6 all the way to verse 10 kuanzia mstari wa 6 kuteremka mpaka wa 10 that there will be the gathering of the saints ya kwamba kutakuwepo na kukusanywa kwa wateule that the rapture will take place ya kuwa unyakuzi utatendeka that the resurrection of the holy dead ya kwamba kufufuliwa kwa wafu takatifu and then na kisha he says the, the, the translation of the living christians kubadilishwa kwa wakristo walio hai the holy living wakristo walio hai takatifu so the holy dead kwa hivyo wafu takatifu resurrected wanafufuliwa and given glorious bodies na wame, na wanapewa miili ya utukufu right now they are bones hivi sasa wao ni mifupa rotten bones mifupa iliyooza but they will be given glorious bodies lakini watapewa miili ya utukufu and glorious garments na mavazi ya utukufu upon that resurrection wakati wa huo ufufuo and then na kisha they will be pulled up watavutwa just like i have prophesied Sa- wasawa na vile nilivyotabiri extensively tena kwa upana across the entire earth kote kote katika dunia nzima on how the rapture will take place jinsi ya vile unyakuzi utafanyika especially hasa sana or in this case here katika kesi hii hapa the rapture 
of the holy dead. Unyakuzi wa wafu takatifu. And I've said na nimesema, that it is the glory of the Messiah ya kuwa ni utukufu wa Masia, that beams on the earth ambao unangaju ya inchi, when that day arrives wakati hiyo siku itafika, and that authoritative glory na hayo, na, na huwa utukufu wenye mamlaka, the glory with power utukufu wenye nguvu, will be able to open the tombs utaweza kufungua makaburi, and pull them out na kuwavuta kuwatoesha inje and I've always described na kila mara nimeelezea how at first when they pulled out wakati mara ya kwanza wanapovutwa the glory ule utukufu is actually mixed with the dust kwa hakika umechanganyika na mavumbi until they go into the pure glory of god hadi wanapoingia katika utukufu halisi wa mungu where there is no dust ambapo hamna chembe chembe za mchanga and i see the messiah receive them na ninaona masia akiwapokea and yet na ili hali the holy living christian wa kristo takatifu walio hai pia they will be translated watageuzwa and they will catch up with them in the sky na wataungana pamoja naye pale angani and the heaven will open na mbingu itafunguka and the two groups will enter na vile vikundi viwili vitaingia and the cloud will close the heaven na na wingu litafunga mbingu 